Hello Maker and welcome back to my channel. If you're not new here, you might have noticed that I haven't been posting for a very good while and I just wanted to do a quick introduction on why that happened and very simply put I had a baby <laughs> and so my time was super super limited and I just really focused on my maternity leave and finally I feel that now it's time to return. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Marta and I'm the founder of Bottega Zero Waste. And um, on this channel, I share with you how to make your own zero waste bath and beauty products with fewer ingredients so you can reduce waste and control what you want to put on your skin and the planet. In today's video, I want to share with you a recipe that I've been wanting to make for a very long time. So a salt soap is one of the first soaps I ever tried when I got into zero waste living and kind of like I wanted to try a soap for the first time. And I want to share with you something that happened to me when I was making the soap because I think there's um, there are a couple of lessons to be learned there. First of all, salt makes a very hard soap. So you have to cut it very, very quickly after you've poured the soap into the mold. So I was with my baby and I didn't have time to unmold it straight after the following day. And actually I waited a whole week before I, I could unmold the soap. And when I cut it, it crumbled before my eyes. So first lesson to be learned here is when you make salt soap, you have to unmold it and cut it very very soon actually i know lots of people cut it even within two or three hours from making it it depends how much salt you use but i will get into more details later on in the video the second lesson to be learned here is that in soap making or like when you're making your own products there might be occasional messes and it's okay to mess up as long as it's not something that is jeopardizing your safety uh, it's just an opportunity to learn from our mistakes and grow. Also want to let you know that my online courses are finally reopened for enrollment. So if you're ready to take your making journey to the next level, make sure to check the links in the description box down below. As always, I started by gathering all the tools and ingredients needed for the recipe. And you really don't need them many, actually. In fact, they all fitted in this storage box. I have also listed uh, all of the ingredients and tools needed uh, in the blog post linked in the description box down below, where you can also uh, grab and download the recipe card. So for this recipe, I chose to use coconut oil and castor oil as my two main oils. So by choosing two oils that have high foaming properties, we can counterbalance this issue. Because the recipe has quite a lot of coconut oil in it, I have also applied a super fat amount of 18%, so the bar will not be drying to the skin at all. If you're completely new to soap making, I highly recommend to check the links in the description box down below, where you'll be able to find free workshops and guides to help you get started before you dive into a more difficult recipe such as this one. Whenever I start a new soap, I always begin by preparing the live solution, and this is because it's the one that takes the longest to cool down. Let me know if you also do it this way. So what you want to do before you prepare the life solution is to wear your safety gear. This is super important. You want to wear your goggles, gloves and respirator. Next, what you want to do is measure out the sodium hydroxide and the water in two separate containers. Then you can add the sodium hydroxide into the water and stir gently. Leave the life solution to cool down until you reach about 100 Fahrenheit, 37 degrees Celsius. You don't want it to be any warmer as otherwise this could overheat and crack the soap. As you're waiting for the life solution to cool down, you can gently melt the coconut oil and when it's completely melted, you can add the castor oil in. When the lye solution has cooled down, I added sodium lactate to it because this helps give the finished bar a very sleek, polished finish. The last thing you want to do uh, before you mix the lye solution with the oils is to make sure that you, you have all your additives ready. In our case, it's the Himalayan pink salt and essential oils. 
In this recipe, I have decided to add Himalayan pink salt at 15% of the oil's amount. Um, you can add more if you want, but um, this could make the bar a little scratchy um, and also might suppress the lather even more. For the essential oils blend, I picked lavender, peppermint and eucalyptus and this was a very similar blend to that soap bar um, that I tried many years ago that made me fall in love with salt bars because um, it has such a refreshing skin feeling. Once you've reached the desired temperature of 100 Fahrenheit, roughly 37 degrees Celsius, it is time to add the lye solution to the oils. I've incorporated everything in nicely with a spatula until the lye was completely mixed in. Next, I went ahead and added pink Himalayan salt and made sure that all of those bits of salt were fully incorporated and that there were no clumps left. Finally, it was time to stick blend everything. I put my stick blender in, tilted the jug a little as the quantity was not very big and I didn't want to incorporate too much air into the batter. This process is actually very fast, it only took me a few seconds until I obtained a light trace. Trace is when you let the soap drip onto the batter and you see a trail left behind. You know that that's when the lye has emulsified with the oils and you can add any delicate additives which are not going to be destroyed by the lye solution, such as essential oils. I added the essential oils and mixed in very well until I was sure that there were no streaks of oil left in the soap. At this stage I could tell that the soap was already ready, I didn't have to stick blend it any longer. Let's just admire this for a second. Lastly, I tapped the mold to get any air bubbles trapped in the soap out and left the soap to harden in the mold completely uncovered to prevent it from overheating. I sprayed the surface with 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol to create a seal and prevent the formation of soda ash. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's very important to unmold and cut the soap even before the 24 hours have passed because the soap will harden up very quickly and could get very hard to cut and a bit crumbly. I personally unmolded and cut the soap the morning after and even like that it was already slightly crumbly so I think I definitely could have unmolded it and cut it a little bit earlier which I suggest you to do. So the last step is left is to leave the soap to cure on a shelf for four to six weeks. So we can let any leftover sodium hydroxide evaporate out and then all the simple goodness of coconut oil, castor oil and salt stay in our bar. I really hope you enjoyed this video and new recipe and as you can see, making your own products it's never about perfection, it's rather a learning journey and actually it's better when we learn together. So. Before I see you in the next video, I will wait for you in the comments down below.